I married John. What a girl, what a world, what a life. Oh, I married John. What a mind, love is blind, what a wife. Tea and gay, all day she keeps my heart laughing. Never know where her brain is blown. To each his own. Can't deny that's why I married John. I married John. Well, let's sit down for just a moment. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, now. Well, it's sure good to see our boy again, Mr. Yeah. Stevens. Oh, we couldn't leave town without spending an evening with old Brad here, could we? Oh, say, yeah. I think we're kind of celebrating tonight for Steve yeah. here. He was just elected chairman of the board of the Central Railroad. Huh? <laughs> That's quite a boy you got there, Linda. Yes, yeah, so all right. That's just peanuts compared to old Dave here. You remember we used to call him stupid? <laughs> stupid? Stupid is now president of international oil. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Uh, do you know what that is, stupid, uh, Dave? Huh? Oh, sure. I've seen lots of them. Where are the nuts? <laughs> No, no, that's uh, Brad's gavel. He's a judge. But what do you know? He stuck to law. <laughs> Did you? Well, David just used being a lawyer. Well, to sort of get started in business. Uh, and after that, <laughs> no stopping it. Well, uh, um, how long do you uh, folks plan on being in town? Oh, we're leaving tomorrow. But you must come and visit us when we open up our house in Maine. Oh, she can't, darling. She's coming to Southampton to see us. Yeah, it's very sweet of you, but you see, Brad and I take a trip every year. Oh. Uh, last year, we took a trip around the world. <laughs> this year, we're going to try someplace else. Well, I think we'd better get going, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Yes, I'll just get my things. I, I think I'll wear my cloth coat tonight. I hung my sable next to my mink, and now my mink is full of sable air, and my sable is full of mink. <laughs> It's the molting season, you know. <laughs> Wonderful evening, wasn't it? Mm. Wasn't the play great? Yeah. Then supper and dancing at the Zanzibar? Mm. Brad, something's bothering you. No, I've just been wondering if I haven't been selfish. Selfish? Yes, all these years I've been content to be a judge. It's given me honor, respect, and dignity. But my wife has to wear cloth coats. Oh, Brad. No, no, I've only been thinking of myself. I haven't thought about you. Now, here, here, take Butterworth and Harper. They had the foresight to use law as a stepping stone to bigger things. Now their wives are wearing mink. And if I weren't a judge, you could have mink, too. But I want you to be a judge. No, no, it's strictly a job with a moderate salary. All this time, I've been cheating you out of a lot of nice things. But I'm happy being cheated. <laughs> you can't fool me. I saw you stroking that mink. I stroke cats, too, but that doesn't mean I want to wear one. They have big homes. They have butlers and chauffeurs and downstairs maids and upstairs maids. Oh, who needs maids? Besides, if we had an upstairs maid in this house, we'd have trouble with her. She'd keep falling off the roof. <laughs> I'm very happy, dear, honest. No, no, I made up my mind. I've been very selfish, and, well, I'm going to do something about it. Tell it, Court. I find that, uh... Judge Stevens' office. Oh, uh, one minute, Mr. Morrison. Mr. Morrison returning your call, Judge. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, why don't you finish what you already have, Miss Bromley? <laughs> Hello, Bill. How are you, Brad? Haven't seen or talked to you in months. I know, and the last time you did, you uh, made me an offer. Does it still stand? Well, you, it does. Mr. Humphrey's still looking for the right man. It uh, still pays $25,000 a year? That's a bonus. I'll take it. Good boy. I'll set up a meeting between you and Mr. Humphrey. But don't worry. With my recommendation, the meeting is a mere formality. Well, you'd better warn Mr. Humphrey that I have no experience in the... Uh, Soup canning business. With your brains, ability to manage people, and your analytical mind, you've all the qualifications to be an ideal executive director of the chicken doodle division. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, I, I, 
I just can't let you do it. The $25,000 a year is nothing to sneeze at, Joan. Can you honestly picture yourself in a cannery? <laughs> I mean, you can't just jump from jurisprudence into chicken noodle. <laughs> well, I'll admit it is quite a jump. Oh, you're a judge, a public servant, a, a man who loves and understands people and, and their problems. You're not a business executive. Why, uh, you, you couldn't take the pressure. It would change you in no time. Joan, you don't seem to understand that my and being... And another thing, Brad, a business executive, you know, is absolutely... Joan, will you please listen to me? Sure. Well, I've been trying to tell you that as far as my being a business executive is concerned, it I'm just... I'm glad you brought that up, darling, because a business executive is just what you shouldn't be. Joan, did it ever occur to you that I'm not doing this just for you? Oh, honey, that's not true. Now, please, Joan, I I've been a judge for a number of years, and I'm ready for something else. It's what I want, believe me. Do you mean that? Yes, I do, so let's just forget about it and, and get some sleep. All right, dear, I hope you know what you're doing. I do. Good night, dear. Good night, Angel. I wonder if he does mean it. Maybe he just thinks he means it. Is Brad really the type to be a business executive? Maybe he won't be happy. And if he isn't happy, I won't be happy. Gosh. <laughs> yes, Mabel, it's just awful. I haven't seen Brad in weeks. He's always tied up in a business conference. Always too busy for me. Well, it's been a year now since he's been a business executive, and. Well, he's a changed man. Watch it, I've got the gout. Oh, wait, I, I think he's home. Bye, Mabel. Will you watch my foot? I've got the gout. I wish I could find someone that could drive. It's a left turn. Hold on there. Will you mind us on the earth? Hello, lover. Uh, who are you? I'm Joan, your wife. Joan, my wife? Of course. Oh, that's quite possible. I do have a wife, and her name is... Uh, Joan, sir. Yes, yes. Come over here, little dear. Forgive me for getting, I got so many things on my mind, you know, I'm very busy. Get me the telephone, will you, Tommy? Don't dawdle, here we are. Get me the Chicago operator, will you? Uh, get me the New York operator, will you, Morrison? Yes, and, 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 and you, you there. I'm Joan, your wife. Oh, yeah, never forget a face. In your case, I'll make an exception. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, the ticker, the ticker. Look sharp, be sharp. Hurry, don't dawdle. A business is from the bottom up. You understand? Bring the ticker, the ticker. A man with a badly cut suit, I can tell. Hurry, God! Humphrey Canning is down four points. <laughs> Every time the stock market goes down, his ulcers act up. Well, what happens when the market is good? Oh, he has a heart attack. <laughs> yes, I've never seen a man take business so seriously. Yes? Ready with your call for Chicago, BJ? Well, give it to me. Yes. I have the call from New York. Yes, it's... ready with your call from New York. All right, hold on, New York, New York. Chicago, what happened to the four carloads of beef for our beef with barley soup? What's that? It's coming? Oh, good go. Hold on, Chicago. New York, New York, what happened to our eight carloads of barley for our beef with barley soup? Well, hurry it up. Use whips. Force if necessary. All right, New York, there we are. Oh, what a relief. Ah. Dad, uh, uh, there's something I'd like to discuss. Oh, yes, yes, my dear, busy, yes, yes. I, oh, yes, I, honey, go out and buy it, dear. When in doubt, take money. There you are. It's not Yes, money. I know. Here, oh. here, here you are. For you. What's that? Big trouble, BJ. Yes, yes, well, what is it? As you know. Our biggest moneymaker is our chicken noodle soup. Yes, yes. DuPont will be able to undersell us. DuPont? But that's impossible. They don't manufacture soup. They do now. They just invented a nylon noodle. A nylon noodle? A nylon noodle? Brad, dear, what I was trying
nothing to say dear, to you, Dear, dear, uh, just go ahead and buy it, will you, dear? Buy it, no, buy no, it, buy no, it. No, honey, Brad. Uh, yes, yes, I'm... dear, here, buy it. Uh, uh, buy it. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Brad, what I'm trying to tell you is that, well, you're a changed man. Now, I want a divorce. Me. Me. Who are you? <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I never forget a card. <laughs> well... What do you have to say about the divorce? <laughs> New York! Get me New York! Get me California! Get me London! Get me London! Come on! Get, get me Boston! Come on, I'll operate it! Here, here! Give me Chicago! Uh, tip up two! Tip up two! Yes, that's right! Tip up two! Yes, yes! Operate it! Brad! 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 Joan! Joan! What's the matter? Oh, Brad, I, I had the most awful dream about you being a business executive. Joan, I, I thought we decided all that. Hey, honey, but you were bald, and you were fat, and, and you had ulcers when things were bad, and, and a heart attack when things were good. Please stay a judge, Brad. Stay a judge, darling. Joni, Joni, please, please, you're giving me a headache. A headache? You see, you're losing your health already. How's the hair, darling? Have you noticed any falling out lately? No, honey. Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, Joan, you uh, won't forget about tonight. I know, I know. We're to be at the Humphreys. They're going to look you over to see if you're good enough for chicken noodle. <laughs> Joan, that is no attitude. Will you please, for my sake, act like you're happy tonight? Like you're glad to join the executive family of the Humphrey Canning Company? I'll do my best. Well, that's more like it. And what's more, I'm going to help you make a good impression. I want you to go out today and uh, buy yourself a mink stole. A mink stole? But we can't afford it. Oh, yes, we can. We have enough money in the bank. No, well, there are other things we need that are more important. Yes, but with my new job, we'll be able to afford these things. The most important thing for you to do is look like the wife of an executive. Besides, dear, I've always wanted you to have a mink. I will not buy a mink. <laughs> will you buy it for me? All right. What size do you wear? Joan, stop avoiding the issue. I want you to go out today and buy a mink. Please, honey, for my sake. All right, I'll buy it, but I won't like it. <laughs> Who are you kidding? You'd love to have a mink. Well, I'd love it, but I won't like it. Hello? Mrs. Stevens, this is Miss Bromley. Can you talk? Well, uh, uh, uh ju just a minute, Mabel. Honey, I think I left the water running in the bathroom, would you? No, I was the last one out. I, I turned it off. Well, uh, uh, go ahead, Mabel. Oh, I see he's there. Look, I know I'm being presumptuous, but how do you feel about the judge giving up law and going into business? Well, I don't like the idea. I don't think she'll be happy. Well, why do you ask? Well, as his secretary, I'm somewhat in a position to observe him and know his moods, and I don't think he's too happy about becoming a business executive. Well, are you sure? Uh, she really seems to want to be one. Oh, she just thinks she does. I mean, if you saw the way the judge has been moping around here for the past few days, honestly, if there was ever a man cut out to serve the people, it's your husband. I know. But that's the way she is, that's the way she's always been, and that's the way she'll always be. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. You're a great girl. So are you. I mean, goodbye, darling. She's gone. You can speak freely now. Well, really, that's all I had to say. I, I hope you don't think I'm butting in. Butting in? Well, I can't thank you enough for telling me what I've known all along. Only now I know I know it. <laughs> Thanks, Miss Bromley. Goodbye. Now, uh, dear, don't forget to get the mink stole, and I'll meet you this evening to go to the Humphreys. Bradley Stevens, I've changed my mind. Huh? I don't want a mink. I don't want anything that you have to be a business executive for. Joni, you are getting a mink. 
I am not. You are getting a mink if I have to drag you down to the fur shop myself. Now, you come on. Come on. Come on, dear. This is it. I'm not going back. I You're just coming won't. with me. I am. It is I it. 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 I'm not pulling out. I'll I... forgive you as long as... You've got it. I told you we had... Slippers. Ow. Ow. I'll never forgive you if you get me a mink coat. That is all... Oh, my neck. Now that looks just lovely on you, Oh, Matt. Isn't it lovely, Harry? Yeah, it is. Feel the fur. Nice, isn't it? Nice. Doesn't it look beautiful on me? Sure does. And it only costs $2,000. Take it off. <laughs> now look here, Harry. You've been promising me a mink ever since the day we were married. Now all I ever hear from you is take it off, take it off. Agnes, you know we can't afford it. Can't afford it. Can't afford it. That's all I ever hear. Now let me Agnes, tell you something, Harry. Agnes, don't yell at me because I get nervous. There's no reason why I can't have any Hear that? Same thing day after day. The wife wants a mink, and the husband won't buy it for her. Stop pushing me, Brad. I don't want a mink. I do not want a mink. Yours. Thanks. Could I help you? Uh, yes, we're looking for something like a mink stole or perhaps a uh, mink coat. <laughs> Brad, I will not let you buy me a mink. Joan. Won't you have a seat right over there, please? No, I will have no seat. <laughs> I'll humor her. You call the boys with the white coats. <laughs> but, Brad, we can't afford a mink. You're getting me pretty angry. I'm buying you a mink, and that is final. I won't take it. And that is final to your final. Here you are, madam. I'm sure you'll like one of these. Now, if you'll just step over here and slip this on, I will not. Joan! <laughs> Maybe I'll try it on, but that's all. That's all. Now, Joan! <laughs> That's the way a real woman should be. She's thinking of her husband's money, not trying to bleed him. Yeah, and that's what I call a real gentleman. He's thinking of his wife's appearance. You never think of me. Well, I would if you were like her. I'd, I'd think of you. Well, if you'd be like him, I'd be like her. I bet she never has to nag him for anything. Oh, if only I'd married a man like that instead of a bum like you. So why stay married to a bum? Why don't you marry him? I'd like to, believe me. All right, I'll introduce you. Say you. Who, me? Yes. This is my wife. She wants to marry you. Huh? What, what, what? Don't worry, she'll take the mink. She'll take anything. Well, she certainly won't take my husband. Say, what's the matter with you anyway? You call yourself a woman? I don't believe I know what you're talking about. You're a disgrace to the sex, that's what. When your husband wants to buy you a mink, don't argue, take it. But I don't want it. What are you trying to do, set a precedent? Take the mink. But I don't want the mink. I don't want my husband to have to make a lot of money and be unhappy in his work. You see, there's a woman, a real woman. She's not like you, you vulture. What? <laughs> Always picking on my remains in my bank account. Always picking, 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 picking. So, you like her better, huh? Yeah, I like her better, huh? Why'd you marry me then? Why didn't you marry a crazy crackpot like her over there who doesn't want mink? A crazy crackpot? Just a minute. Crazy minute. Crazy Just, a minute. Just a minute. Shut up! Oh, don't you yell at him. There's a real gentleman who isn't too cheap to buy his wife mink. Now, now, you just, uh, Matt, you just, will you let go of the sleeve, dear? <laughs> now, let me tell oh, you a thing or two. Out. Don't you yell at her. There is a lady. She's not out to, to bleed her poor husband to death. Why don't you marry her? Go on. I set you free. All right, I will. And don't think I won't. Madam, will you please marry me? Hmm? Oh, <laughs> well, uh. I'm a little tied up now. This is ridiculous. This lady happens to be my wife. Well, you don't deserve her like I do. I, I'd be kind to her. You wouldn't catch me forcing a mink coat on this poor kid. Now, 
he is sweet. Just a minute. Yeah, I'm sure you'll like this one, madam. I am not interested. <laughs> well, I am. Anybody would be stupid enough not to take a magnificent film. <laughs> oh, how does it look, honey? Honey? Oh, you know, you can buy it for All right, all right. Honey. I'll buy it for you already. Oh. Anything for a little peace of mind. Oh. He did. It made me ashamed of myself. Really? Oh, thank you. Oh, this is the most beautiful thing I ever saw. I don't want it. Why not? It's her fault. She made me ashamed of myself. But, Angel, I, I want you to have it. I won't take it. I won't take it. Here, take it away. Take but it away. Angel, down face, look him. For me, please. Huh? Well, all right. If it'll make you happy, why not? Oh, it's so beautiful. Look at that. Two years ago, I gave up a nice, dignified job in the post office to go into business to buy her nice things. You know what she said then? What? She screamed at me. She said she didn't want anything. All she wanted me to do was stay in the post office where I was happy. And now, after two years, all she's got is the gimme, 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 gimme. I heard that, you worm. Two years ago, you had hair. Ow, oh, not so hard, Aggie. You didn't have that pot belly, and you weren't so hard to live with. Two years ago, just having you was enough. Now I need the mink so that I can ignore the rest. Well, is it my fault that I'm nervous and hard to live with? What do you think running a business is, a, a picnic? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm so upset. Oh, you keep out of this. Believe me, I, I should have stayed in the post office. Why didn't you then? You're not the type for business. You're not the type. Well, neither is my husband. Really? What does he do? Oh, he's a business executive. No kidding. Ain't it murder? No, I'm afraid my wife is pulling your leg. I'm not really a business executive. Huh? No, I'm a judge. And, well, I just learned something, and I'm going to stay a judge. Oh, Brad, don't <laughs> Agnes. Ah, Harry. Now, fess up, lover. Doesn't this look better on you than a can of chicken noodle? Yes, it feels good to be here where I belong and to know I'm going to stay here. Mm, let me have that, dear. Huh? No, Joni, why do you... I... And now, as presiding judge of the Stevens family, I hereby sentence you to life. Really, Your Honor, life? Yes, as a judge and as my husband. You see, honey, I got you on two counts. And I like them both. <laughs> here, here, order in the cart. Order in the cart. <laughs>